Next question would be uh, like. Spanish 200. What is the only country in South America whose official language is not Spanish? Jen? Brazil. That is correct. They speak Portuguese. Uh, Spanish 250. What is the name of the free trade agreement between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico? The Jen? North American Free Trade Agreement. Look at that. I didn't even have the words. I just had NAFTA, <laughs> and he got it correct. I was thinking of NAFTA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spanish 300. Vincente Fox is the former president of what country? Chad? Mexico? Indeed, oh. Mexico. <laughs> uh, uh, Bio 100. Bio 100. What is the name of the naturalist who is famous for his theory of evolution? Andrew? What is Charles Darwin? Who is Charles who? Darwin? <laughs> but yes, that is correct. <laughs> Go ahead and pick the next one. Uh, I'll take Bio for 150. Which order of mammals has a pouch? Chad? Marsupial? Yeah, I mean, it has kangaroo in parentheses, but I'm going to go ahead and... Is that right? Marsupial? Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll give it to you for 150. Uh, bio 300. Bio for 300. What are the two end products of aerobolic cellular respiration? I'm sorry, aerobic cellular <laughs> respiration. <laughs> go ahead. ATP and oxygen? No. Andrew? ATP and CO2? No. That's not what I have on mine. <laughs> Chad? Is it uh, ATP and alcohol? No. Oh. It's carbon dioxide and water, oh. actually. So you were close with oh. CO2, but. How about all the ATP? And we'll go ahead with. Um, <laughs> yeah, ATP. Yeah. Uh, Was it Chris that got the last one correct? Nope. No. Oh, sure. uh, oh, okay. Bio 250. In what kind of organism would you expect to find xylem and phloem? I, am I even pronouncing these words right? Go ahead, Andrew. Plants. Yes, that is correct. Do you uh, want to close I'll, out bio? Yeah, I'll close out bio. All right. What is the type of animal that eats both plants and meat? Andrew? Omnivore. Yes, correct. So it looks like you have exercise and sports science or theater left to choose from. I'll take theater for 100, please. What is the name of Shakespeare's famous London theater? Chad? Globe Theater. The Globe Theater is correct. Which one would you like next? Oh, theater 150. <coughs> what stage style features audience members sitting on each side of the stage? <laughs> the answer is round. Chad, you can go ahead and pick the next um, question. Theater 200. Dating back to 1988, what show has over 9,600 performances and is the longest active show on Broadway? Hmm, theater section, not too hot for you guys, <laughs> huh? The answer is The Phantom of the Opera. My guess. <laughs> Chad, go ahead no and idea. pick the next one. Uh, theater 300. Theater for 300. Often referring to a music interlude between acts, what French term can also simply mean intermission? All right, I'll take that as no one knows. <laughs> the correct answer is entracate, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm no French major, but. <laughs> uh, All right, Chad, go ahead and pick the next one. ESS 100. ESS for 100? Yeah. Which weighs more, muscle or fat? Chris? Muscle. That is correct. ESS 150. <clears throat> BMI stands for what, Chris? Body mass index. Yes. <laughs> ESS 200. What is the recommended amount of time the average person, person should spend exercising per week? Any guesses? Correct answer is 2.5 hours. Go ahead, Chris, pick the next one. Theater 250. Theater 250, all right. What ancient Greek is now widely considered the first actor? The correct answer is Thespis. Yes, that's 250. <laughs> Ana <laughs> anaerobic activity is defined as what? Chris? Activity without oxygen. 
That is correct. Short bursts of physical activity that don't allow the body to use oxygen. ESS 300. What is an electrical impedance test used to measure? Andrew? What is uh, percent body fat? That is correct. All right, well, you guys have now cleared out the entire round. So we are going to take another quick break and we will come back with the final round. No more beautiful image in the galaxy than that of a nebula. Ever since the Hubble Space Telescope actually started working in 1990, we as a planet have been granted front row seats to the most incredible show in the universe. But what is a nebula? The most general definition of the term is a cloud of interstellar gas and dust. But it turns out that there are several different types. Emission nebula actually emit colored light. These nebula are neat because they are often birthing grounds for new stars. The opposite of an emission nebula is a planetary nebula. Here, stars are in the process of dying and are losing layer after layer of gas to the interstellar winds. Even more dramatic are supernova remnants. These are stars that didn't wait to die. They blew up. A nuclear reaction to the core of the star causes the whole thing to implode on itself. The gases get superheated and explode outward to create these stunning displays. Perhaps the most striking nebula are dark nebulas. Dark nebula are clouds of dust and rock and interstellar junk that block the light behind them. The heavens are filled with entrancing images like these. We've only begun to scratch the surface of what else is out there amongst the stars. All right, welcome back to Get Classy. So we are in our final round here. I have Andrew, Chad, and Chris with me up at the desk here. Uh, Chad is in first place with 2,050 points. Andrew is in second place with 1,450 points. And Chris is in third place with 1,150 points. So boys, for the final round, our topic will be history. So be sure and write your bid down on how well you guys think that you know or how much of a history buff you guys think you are. All right, are we ready with our bids? We'll take that question. What is the name of the man who nominated Thomas Jefferson to write the Declaration of Independence? And you guys will have 30 seconds. audience. We will start with Chris, who is in last place. And how much did you bid, Chris? All of it. 11.50. All of it. He's going for all of it. 11, 1,150. And what is your answer? My answer is Benjamin Franklin. Who is Benjamin Franklin? I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Oh. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, we'll go with you next. How much did you bid for this question? I bet uh, 1400 Ooh, is keeping himself safe with 50 uh, points. And I also guessed Benjamin Franklin. He also guessed Benjamin <laughs> <laughs> And you are also incorrect. I'm sorry. Chad, let's see if you can take all of it home. Well, how much did you guess for this I question? I bet it all. 20, he 50. bet it all. So. And I also guessed Benjamin Franklin. Oh, <laughs> and the answer was John Adams. So it looks like Andrew, who was smart and saved 50 <laughs> points for himself, yeah. is going to take home nice. our right. Glenmore Lane's <laughs> gift certificate. So congratulations yeah. for that. What are you going to do? Where, when are you going to go? Who are you going to take? 
Uh, I'm probably going to go on a double date yeah. with uh, my best friend, his girlfriend, and then me and my roommate. Interesting. So. Do you bowl? Uh, on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, what, what better way to get better at bowling than with, uh, when the, with our, our coupon? What about you guys? Are you pretty jealous? Do you guys wish you would have won the coupon? Yeah, I think sure. we both know we're better people anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed your time here at Get Classy. We it was a pleasure. Did. Yeah. Fun. Thank you. And congratulations again to Andrew. Unfortunately, that's Thank all you. the time that we have for today, so make sure to join us next semester for another edition of Get Classy. Thanks for joining.